This video brought to you by jadedpainting.com. If you need your miniatures painted to a tabletop standard, check out jadedpainting.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of this painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay and I'll be showing you how to paint this Sanguinor model from the Blood Angels Codex. So, I continued on all of the white areas of the model by giving them a Drakenhoof nightshade, similar to, I, similar to what I did on the big wings, but now on the small wings. And as before, I watered it down a little bit using water, just to make sure that it really gets in the recesses and doesn't give too dark of a tint to all these areas. But uh, I really love giving wings a blue tint or a shade and uh, going over them with white afterwards, which is what I'm doing now. So I use white scars. And I'm going to go over the wings. Uh, I'll actually do two coats, so I'm only going to show one. And what I did for the first coat was go over the entire wings, leaving the recesses, the uh, dark blue. And then for the second coat, I just went towards the outside of the tips of the wings, make them much more bright white and uh, a little bit darker white in the areas closer to the tips, or sorry, the middles. I then started on all of the scrolls and parts of the purity seals with Ushapti bone which is basically the, um, the bone or scroll color that you typically use for Games Workshop. As with the previous step, I watered this coat down just a little bit just to get really nice even coverage without drowning out any of the details on these areas. Luckily though, there aren't that many details on these areas since they're large flat surfaces, but still, you just want to be precautious. I then once again used to shabby bone on all the scroll areas on his legs as well. Here you, you can see me working on the purity seals. And then when it was dry, I gave all these areas an Agrax Earth Shade. Uh, it's a perfect brown shade to go with the brown areas, plus it'll really age these areas greatly and give them a really nice older, dirtier appearance, which is what we're going for for scrolls. Uh, if you have a little bit more time and you want to little, add extra detail, feel free to use a, an art pen and draw you know, ver lines along the scrolls just to give them a little bit more character and some writing on them. And with the previous shading, I watered this one down a little bit so that it's not just a giant dark tint on it. That way it just gives it some really nice depth and an older feel to it. And with other shades, if you are unhappy with the depth of color after one shading, feel free to do a second one. Just remember to, sh to let the first one completely dry before proceeding to the second shading. And then I used an airbrush once again to do a gradient over the sword. I decided to do a single gradient because that's actually what the client wanted. So I just did a gradient first of white. I typically go from light to dark and then I did a gradient through Lothurn blue starting at the top and working way downwards. So down will be white, up will be the darkest. And just feathered it along the sword. And after Lothurn blue I did a coat of Kalidor Sky. And as you can see, I'm just slowly feathering it down the sword. So next is Kalidor Sky. And already you can see a really nice gradient going on of the sword. And just remember to stop approximately the same location on both sides so that it's relatively equal. And then I finished it off with a 1 to 1 mix of Cantor Blue and Abaddon Black. It's just for the, the tip, so it produces a really nice gradient from white to almost a black, which is just a very dark blue. And then I also just use a varnish on the sword to protect it. That was, was not seen. And then I did some more blues, but I, stopped with the op I started with the opposite color for the areas of the jewels on the body with Calidor Sky. And then I did a gradient through Teclas Blue, just focusing more on the central areas of the jewel. And I did a white dot in the corner using white scars. 
And when the jewels were done, I started on all the metallic areas of the model with lead belcher, which is a really nice base color. I didn't water this one down because I wanted to get good coverage over the gold with a lighter metallic color, such as silver. And I also painted his chalice, uh, the, at least the central part of his chalice, with the lead belcher as well. Remember to get nice even coverage before proceeding to the shade. And then I just gave it a shade with Nuln Oil. Once again, if you want an older, dirtier, worn out appearance, go to one one mix of Nuln Oil and Agrex Earthshade. I just wanted to keep it more pristine for the specific model, so I only used Nuln Oil. Luckily this step did not take very long, since shading doesn't take very long. And as you can see, my goal is just to get this oil into the recesses, and get some nice depth of color. And when it was dry, I highlighted all these areas. Very quick highlight, uh, almost a dry brush of Iron Breaker, the first layer color associated with Lead Belcher. But this step, as I just mentioned, I basically used an overbrush or, an, or a dry brush technique, just focusing on the raised areas, leaving the recesses much darker. And finally, I gave it one more edge highlighting with Rune Fang Steel, just picking out certain details that really wanted to stand out under the light. A good way to do this is just to look at which areas your lamp or your light source is hitting and focus on those. And finally, I painted the areas behind the legs and the gaps in the armor with gray liner. Gray liner is almost a, a black, but it's actually a very, very dark matte gray when it dries. And it's a great way to produce a little bit more depth and contrast on these gaps in armors as opposed to painting them black. And I also use this gray liner to paint the central part of the sword just to divide the sections. And you can see right there, and that's it. You now know how I painted up the Sanguinor, one of my favorite looking HQ models for the Blood Angels Codex. As you can see on the base, I just used some simple brown painted sand and some green grass flock for some contrast, but I think it turned out really nicely and I think it just looks really awesome on the tabletop. And as always, I really hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. Please like the video, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't done so, leave comments in the comment section down below, and favorite the video if you really, really liked it. So until next time, this is Jay saying, Happy painting, everyone.